What's good, super riders? Welcome back to the Shred Spot. My name is Aaron, and today I'm gonna to teach you how to jump gaps with your bike. We're gonna work from the basics of how to do it and build all the way up to the end of this video. I'm gonna be showing you how to take off with pinpoint accuracy as well as land with pinpoint accuracy. We're gonna put the triangles over here to the test, so stick around. To set the stage for this skill that you're about to learn, there are a few techniques that you need to have figured out before you learn how to jump gaps. Those two skills are pedal kicks and back hops. You wanna have a pretty solid command of both those things. If you don't, there are two videos below that I'll put in the description that will break each one of those down to get you where you need to be. If you can't do either one of those and you haven't even started learning, there's another gap video that I did called Easy Gaps. And Easy Gaps is a way to jump between obstacles without hopping on your back wheel and without having to pedal kick. I'll put a link to that one in the description below as well. Let's talk a little bit about bike setup, and I'm gonna to try to simplify this as much as possible because you could be riding a competition bike, you could be riding a street trials bike, you could be riding a mountain bike, and you could be riding a variety of different wheel sizes at this stage. The one thing I wanna tell you is that a main component of learning this skill is learning how to compress the rear tire and to use the rebound from that compression to help give you a little extra push when it comes time to do the gaps. And so for that, I like to take a little bit of air out of my rear tire, not enough that I'm in a pinch flat when I land on stuff, but enough that it just makes it a little bit squishy when I'm on the back tire. Now that can depend depending on what bike you're riding, what tires you're running, how heavy you are, what terrain you're riding on, there's all kinds of different things. But to simplify it, I'll say, take just a little bit out so the wheel feels a little bit more squishy than normal, and that extra rebounding compression is what's gonna give you a little extra pop when you're riding. Let's move on to the actual technique though, now that we got all this other stuff out of the way. And just like everything else, we're gonna start on flat ground. So we're gonna go back to those first two techniques that we talked about, the back wheel hop and the pedal kick. And as we're on flat ground, what we're going to do is just work on getting up to your back wheel and putting in the four elements that you're gonna to need to start that first gap. We're gonna basically do a pedal kick like you've been practicing this entire time. We're just gonna give it a little extra boost so that you start going from point A to point B on flat ground and building up confidence that way. Although there's a lot going on with this back wheel hop and setting up for the gap, a lot of stuff kind of works together at the exact same time. So what you want to do is get up onto the back wheel. Now you're gonna sink your front wheel down a little bit lower, but as you do that, you're going to be setting your pedals for another pedal kick. And the way I like to think about it is that my cranks are rotating around the bike. So I keep my feet sort of in the same position, but as I lower the front wheel, it's kind of helping me back pedal my cranks into that position. And when I'm holding my legs straight and lowering the front wheel, I'm counterbalancing the front wheel by sinking my body back over the back wheel. So your front wheel goes down, your body goes over the back wheel to counterbalance that front wheel dropping. And as you're trying to keep your feet sort of in the same place, that lowering of the front wheel is making it so that they crank back just in time for that pedal kick to happen. At this stage, you're halfway through the gap motion and it's time to send it. And what you're going to be doing is sort of the opposite of what you just did. You're gonna be pushing on the pedals. You're gonna be pulling that handlebar back up toward your chest and you're gonna be jumping your body up and forward. And all of those three things are gonna propel the bike forward. Now again, we're doing this on flat ground so that you build up the confidence and you start to get a feel for how far you can actually jump from your back wheel. And as you learn how to lower that front wheel farther, as you learn to crank your pedals back a little bit farther, and as you become more explosive in this movement, you're going to start jumping farther and farther. It would be hilarious if I just made a gap video and didn't talk about anything other than the takeoff. So let's talk through the next steps. What happens after you take off for the gap? Now, the first thing I wanna to talk to you about is how to think about being in the air because a lot of times when I'm doing gaps and I'm aiming for something, it's a little bit farther than I think I can actually jump. And one thing that helps me is if I actually aim above where the landing is. And that seems to help me get a bit of an arc as opposed to just shooting straight across. I think about lifting my bike up and then having it come down. You know, a lot of times when we talk about pivots and things where we're lifting our wheel up, we lift it a little bit higher so it has more time to fall into place. And that for me is the same thing with gaps. I'm not trying to necessarily shoot across to it. I'm trying to lob 
the bike into place and land on the obstacle. And a good reason for that is that if you've got a little bit of that downward force, it's gonna help you with the landing so the bike doesn't shoot out in front of you. The next thing we gotta talk about is the landing. And there's a couple of different pieces of nuance here. Number one is obviously the brake. You need to grab the brake before you land, but I usually wait until the split second before I land to grab the brake. There's something about keeping that back wheel turning while I'm in midair that makes me feel like I've got some additional momentum. And it's also just one less thing I have to worry about until I'm about to land. So I wait until about a split second before I land to really grab that rear brake. The second thing I do when I'm landing a gap I use my entire body weight to sink down into the rear wheel. And sinking down is basically like making an anchor and locking in where that back wheel is. And so I'm not just using my brakes and relying on my brakes alone, I'm also using my body as a brake to bring all my weight down on this one particular spot. The last thing I wanna say, and this is a little preview for once we get into jumping two obstacles, I know right now we're on flat ground, but I also wanna think about where I'm landing on the obstacle. I'm not landing on top of an obstacle, I'm aiming for the corner of an obstacle. So that's a big part about the landing as well. Where are you actually aiming to put your back wheel? But we'll get to that. This next step is gonna take things to another level. What I want you to do to lock everything you've learned so far, we're gonna gap, but we're gonna gap up to something. So find some kind of ledge, find some kind of curb. I've got Scrappy here in the warehouse. Something where you're gonna be practicing jumping up to it from flat ground. There's a couple reasons why this is good. Number one, you're gonna be on flat ground. So even if you totally blow it, you're still gonna be on flat ground. You're not gonna fall in a gap or anything like that. Next, you're gonna be aiming at something. You're gonna be having to jump to something. You're gonna feel what it's like for your back wheel to hit a ledge and land on top of it. You're also going to be working on getting a feel for that kind of rebound and compression in your rear tire as you take off and as you land. And you're also gonna get a good feel for what it's like for that back wheel to actually land on something and stick to it. You're gonna use your body as an anchor. You're gonna get that brake timing worked out. Again, you're doing this on a low obstacle so you can get a good feel for it in a low consequence environment. So take everything you learn from gapping on flat ground and take it up onto this curb, this parking block, anything you can find to really start honing it in. And where you wanna take it from there, you wanna start backing farther and farther away from it so you get a sense of how far can I gap. The last little bonus feature here is that you're jumping up and like we talked about, instead of shooting across, more lobbing to the location, learning how to gap up is gonna help you learn how to gap farther because it's gonna put you in the right arc to actually start doing real gaps. One small detail that I wanna add when you're working on gapping up to something, something that will make it a lot easier is to come at it with just a little bit of an angle. And that's really for two reasons. Number one, you're not gonna bang your front wheel in on the way up. And number two, it actually gets your back wheel closer so it shortens the actual gap itself. You can actually use this exact same thing when you're doing regular gaps too, kind of come at it on a little bit of an angle. But as you're learning this thing, as you're jumping up onto the box for the first time or the ledge or curb or whatever, come at it at just a little bit of an angle. Try like a 45 degree angle to start. You'll see it in the video exactly what I mean. Now it's time to actually send it on a real gap. And the thing that you can't ignore here is that there is a mental aspect that goes into doing gaps. You're looking down at this basic hole in between the two things that you're gonna jump between. And that definitely takes its toll on you. And so even though you can jump five feet or whatever on flat ground, don't start at that distance because it takes a little extra out of you when you're jumping across something that scares you or anything like that. Start small, start low, start flat, and build your way up, build your confidence. Because it doesn't help you if you fail your first try. It makes it that much scarier to get back on the bike and send that gap again. Just start mellow, start on a parking block to a parking block, or find some kind of area that you can be really comfortable jumping between. Don't go for your biggest distance the first try because if you undershoot or overshoot or do anything wrong technically, it can set you back mentally way farther. I've said my piece when it comes to starting small on gaps, and now it's time to answer the other question that's probably still in your head. Where do I take off from? How do I know if I'm in the right place? And this can be kind of tricky because 
what you think you're doing on the bike versus what's actually happening on the bike are a lot of times way different. People who think they're right at the edge are traditionally four or five inches back from the edge. And if you're that far back, you're using a lot of the power in your pedal kick to get your rear wheel to roll to the edge before you actually take off. The flip side of that is if you get too far to the corner of the edge and you try to pedal kick off, it's actually gonna shoot you down and you're not gonna get all the power out of your pedal either. So the sweet spot is traditionally within about a half inch to an inch of the ledge because what's gonna happen, you're gonna be on your back wheel, but as you lower that front wheel down, the whole wheel on the back wheel is gonna rotate forward and you need to have it far enough back so that you can drop your front wheel without shooting off the front of the obstacle. So my best advice here is to actually film yourself while you're riding, take a real close look at where your back wheel is and match where you need to be versus how low your front wheel is going before you do that big snap to kick the gap. Hey, one quick thing before we move on. I know you guys have seen me wear the Super Rider hoodie and the beanie and all that stuff in all my videos, but if you wanna support my channel, the best thing you could do would be to go to superrider.tv and go pick one up. It would mean the world to me to have you running some Super Rider gear, and it all helps the channel. It helps with where we're trying to go with all this stuff. I promise I'm gonna put it to good use. Great, so you're comfortable jumping now from point A to point B. You've been practicing it tons. You know exactly how far you can jump from this obstacle to that obstacle, but chances are the real flat obstacles and you haven't had to worry about the takeoff or the landing other than just getting from one side to the other. The next step that you're gonna take is actually gonna be jumping with precision. And that can be two different things. It can be a takeoff with precision where you have to leave from the absolute perfect place with your back wheel, or it could be landing with precision where you have to hit a certain landing and stay on your back wheel or not overshoot or undershoot because it's a handrail or it's a rock or it's a sawhorse like this. There's a lot of different reasons why you would need to do both. The hardest part about this whole thing about precision takeoffs and landings is that a lot of times when you find a specific opportunity to do this, you have to send the whole thing. You have to jump up with precision and then you have to gap with precision and land it and not die in the process and that can be really hard and the best advice I can give you to practice these kind of things is to try to break it up as much as you can so as you're out riding try to find scenarios that are lower risk where you can still jump to something and land with precision on it even a small rock that's maybe you know six inches or a foot off the ground Think about landing to something with precision and then jumping back down to the ground. And then also think about what would it feel like to get on there with precision and just pedal kick and gap off onto flat ground. So try to not only break these two things up, but practice them independent of each other. How could I jump to something that's kind of sketchy and I need to have perfect wheel placement and then jump off? And then how could I land on something with precision and maintain my balance on that back wheel? Really try to separate those two things apart so you don't find yourself in this do or die situation where you have to jump up to something with perfect precision, then from there take off to land somewhere. You know what I mean? Like break it up into two separate things and then when you find yourself in a scenario where you have to be precise in both those cases, you'll know what to do. Because the hardest thing, especially when it comes to taking off, is that you don't wanna to be too far behind the takeoff because your front wheel will drop and you flip over the bars, but you also don't wanna to be too far forward on the takeoff because then it's gonna shoot you down. So getting that landing and takeoff just right with precision is really hard to do in the moment but if you can start keeping an eye out for areas where, oh, there's a small rock, I could jump up to back wheel and, and get my balance back and get my precision right, and maybe I can jump off that by pedal kicking off it again, you're gonna get a really, really good sense because there's nothing worse than being up onto something like this, pedal kicking and have your back wheel spin out. That is absolutely terrifying. I still think about it every time I ride, even in the warehouse, of what it would be like to slide off the back of this thing. Lower the consequences as much as you can when you're on rides. Think about jumping up to back wheel on something that's not perfect square and flat. Think about jumping off something that's not perfect square and flat. And then when the time comes where you can put those two things together, you'll be ready for it. I know we're covering a lot right now, so if you wanna learn an easier way to do gaps, there's a video for it right here that you can go check out.